On this episode of How to Society, we will be talking about technology. Ooh, I love technology. And then in my head, I just heard the intro. <laughs> Sorry, come on. I think the best technological advance we ever made as a species was the wheel. That is a very good point, honestly. And well, well, when we're talking about technology, we shouldn't just consider tech technology mm -hmm. because you consider everything they did in the Middle Ages with farming, mm -hmm. uh, quotation, uh, rotating crops and all that. Like There was a lot of technological advancement in the times that we call the Dark Ages mm -hmm. even. But most of it was agricult agricultural. And that is the number one technology, not the wheel. Well, yeah, but without the wheel, agriculture was... Could still do it. Well, yeah, you could still do it, but it was made easier. Yeah, for sure. But but agriculture is what allowed us to not have to spend all day hunting. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is very true. But, yeah, no, I mean, definitely it's our ability to make tools and use tools and... And, and it's always crazy. I mean, new technology always brings a technological revolution wherein everybody gets displaced. Everybody freaks out like, oh, we're all going to lose our jobs. And then, mm -hmm. so the first industrial revolution, you know, you had farmers who were literally just making clothes and things in their houses because mm -hmm. they just worked with their family unit, kind of like a factory. Well, and not even that. I mean, during the Second World War, you couldn't get access to a lot of clothes. So, like, that was the thing I read it where... Uh, uh, flower manufacturers noticed that uh, girls were taking the bags and making dresses out of it. So they started doing patterns on the flower mm. so they would have something nicer to wow. make a dress out of. Wow. So, <clears throat> yeah. No, um, I, the next leap is going to be AI. Yeah, it does. Taking over you know. all the menial labor and, you know. It's going to be really interesting to see how society deals with that too because, like, I mean, I think about that. Like, I work at a foundry. All these guys, it's like, they're not going to, like, everybody says learn to code. These guys are not going to learn to code, you know? Like, even I wouldn't want to learn how to code. And so it's what is going to happen to that majority of people who are in those manufacturing jobs. So I feel like there's still going to be a need. There's certain things that it's cheaper to have a human do. Right. Because there's, uh, this is going to sound horrifying, mm -hmm. but it is cheaper. It is to replace a human than to right. replace a robot. Right. So I've seen plenty of jobs in factories that are fully automated. Mm -hmm. And there's a human in one step because the robots that were designed to do it kept breaking because of either conditions or the repetitiveness of it or something. And a human can just kind of, well, that guy will get some disease and we'll get another dude to do it. Right. So. We are kind of a cheap labor if you well, really stop and think about it. And my thing is, so once, so once places actually start making these like foundries with more advanced AI, that is going to push businesses like the one we have, which is still stuck in the 80s because that's when, you know, mm -hmm. they, they got all their technology. It's going to push businesses like that off the market. Because it's going to be like, listen, they can produce it for way cheaper at a much more efficient price with less, you know, human failures involved. And, I mean, you also got to remember, there's always going to be a need for somebody to fix a robot. Right. I mean, right. although it is getting to a point where one robot can kind of fix another one. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, we all, yeah, you people need to mute your shit. Um... Cody works in basically fixing robots, for lack of a better way to put it. That's what I used to do as well. And you need a human mind to troubleshoot it sometimes because it's something that you can fix the same thing every single day and it'll fail slightly different. Sometimes it's the same exact issue, right. but sometimes it's slightly different in some minuscule way that a computer or robot would might not be able to figure it out. Right. And so it takes a person to either fix it by using a rubber band or something stupid, but it fixes it. And uh, so, and zip ties. Yeah. Well, 
one thing that uh, people like Tucker, Car Tucker Carlson and other people will say is that we should slow down the rate of our technological advancement so that mm. people can keep jobs. And I don't think that's the right no, thing. No, it it's, really isn't. Well, it's just like saying that when the light bulb <laughs> came out, we should have kept gas lamps around longer so that people could have kept... It's like, no, like mm -hmm. we need to progress and move with the times. And every civilization has always done that. It's like we progress, yep. we move on. That's why we have new small people, so they can grow up in a world that they're used to. Yeah. Carlson also is the dude from Fox, right? Yes. Um, he also s told a historian that he was a piece of shit, and he doesn't know what he's talking about. So well, he's not the, the most reliable he source. Is, actually, anything. Tucker Carlson is pretty good, and he does. He has a lot of. Are we talking about the dude with the bow tie? No, he's the the guy who doesn't let the other person speak and kind of mm -hmm. gives them weird looks like, so what you're saying, but he, he actually is, for a Republican, he's very moderate or in the middle. Like, yeah. people actually agree so, with leftists on some things. This twat used to have a bow tie, okay. and then he went up head to head, to head with, um, from Comedy Central, used to have a new show. Okay. Canadian, yes. I can't remember his name now. Um, Cody, guy with the bow tie. Had the show news show in Comedy Central, not Stephen Colbert, John Daly. Okay. Uh, uh, Stewart. John. John, John Stewart. Stewart. Okay. Yes. He and and this douchebag had a full on debate, and John Stewart made fun of his bow tie. And after that thing, he stopped wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yes, he's the bow tie twat. I don't like him. Well, as far as Fox News goes, I think he's the best opinion person they have. Should watch yeah, that so. debate with John Stewart. I, 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 I will do that. I mean, obviously, as we all know, and at this table, you know, opinions are. Pickles, yeah, right, right. So, like, yeah, he's better at, you know, shoving his opinions down people's throats, but when it comes to, like, factual stuff, he's, like, like, they had to dig deep through the shit to find him and to put him where he's at. Maybe. That's just, and that's just my opinion. Get, getting back to technology. <laughs> um, it seems like the more advanced it gets, the quicker it advances in some aspects. Mm -hmm. Um... And we're also headed for a slowdown, though, because we can't make... We're getting to a point where the chips are so small and so precise at this point. If we get smaller, electrons are going to be jumping over wires and not going to be able to work. So, And that's where we get into quantum computing. So, yeah, the whole thing is that... So there's this phenomena called quantum tunneling that happens. And so things are getting so small that you can't no longer stop it from happening. Yep. So, but I... We're still a ways away from that. The yeah. biggest issue right now is um, memory capacity. There was there's this equation for memory, and then we're reaching a, a cross thing where it, we're literally not getting better at it mm -hmm. unless we change the way we're doing it. Gotcha. Um, yeah, no, uh, technology can definitely help us and hurt us. I mean, there's been plenty of advancements that have caused a lot of the issues that we're dealing with today. I mean, you could blame, and I hate to say it this way, but you could blame uh, global warming or all this that we're going through, through for our industrialization. You know, yes. That but, but that's the thing. It's industrialization that is causing most of the global warming. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily the technologies. Because once you get to nuclear power, mm -hmm. that's very efficient. It's very clean. Even natural gas is better than coal. But a lot of industrialized countries like America... We burn so much coal to get where we're at, and that's what uh, countries trying to get themselves to the first world are having to do. They have to burn coal so they can have those energy sources to yeah. progress further. Uh, so in countries that are industrializing are burning coal, but the, the other problem is China is also burning a large amount of coal. Like mm -hmm. They're like the number one consumer of coal. Although, I, I mean, I didn't, I should have read more into it. But they were talking about they've got a very aggressive tree planting mm -hmm. program going mm -hmm. on. Did well, you read that? To so it? I know that they're doing that, and I thought something along the lines of like they were doing a lot of um, what is it called building skyscraper gardens or some garbage yeah, like, like that. But garden. yeah, rooftop. But they've also I, mean, I know like Beijing. I'm pretty sure it was Beijing. Like super smoggy. Everyone had to wear masks. They've actually 
reduced a lot of their colon on mm -hmm. and usage there and their air is a lot cleaner now um and i think they were aiming more towards wind and solar mm -hmm. to compensate for that yeah i mean it's still they've got a ways to go but they are trying you mm -hmm. know and and there are um people trying to make co2 scrubbers that can literally yep. take the co2 out of the air and from what I read somewhere, somebody's been successful in it, like not for a uh, large scale, but they have made a prototype yeah. that can actually do that. So. I read, I read uh, the other thing, uh, the cost of wind turbine just went down okay. per gigawatt. Okay. Like it went down significant amount where now it is very, very good. I didn't so know. yeah, I don't know what changed, but. Yeah, I know we have a lot of wind farms around Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. But it, what was I going to say? How, so the fear that everybody has with, you know, technology and taking their jobs away, I, I feel like that's so unfounded. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, yes, I can kind of see that if you are doing a job that you know is so dumb. It's going to get taken over by a machine. Exactly. But it's like you're only doing that because you're lazy and you don't really want to do anything more. Well, see, I, I don't know if I agree with that because... The in, job in the case that I'm talking about, though, I'm talking about, like, the type of job that involves, like, you push one thing. Mm. Like, that that level of job. That's the only kind of jobs that are at risk of being taken over right now. Right. Um, you, you could... You, you know how people you know, McDonald's started doing the, mm -hmm. the kiosk. kiosk and a lot of people were freaking out about that. I don't know. I feel like that's not such it's, a bad thing. It's it's not because even with the kiosk, so yeah, you, it's just a, it's, you're cutting out the middleman essentially when you're using the kiosk. Mm -hmm. It didn't take anyone's job realistically because you still need somebody up at the yep. other counter to handle like, hey, you know, you put pickles on my burger. I didn't want pickles and the flavor's still on them so I can't just take it off. Gotta make me a new burger without pickles. Go. You still have those, the people that need to deal with, yes. with the customer issues, mm -hmm. whether it's management or- Plus, you know. most people that do registers hate them. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. realistically, if that means they can do another job in the place, mm -hmm. because I, I mean, that's the bullshit is a lot of these people get hired on for a, a floating position yep. they don't want to be a register person they want to do all their shit but they get thrown at the register yep. and even then let's say you know for sake of example mcdonald's replaced everything and they said we're not having no more, you're not going to talk to a person face to face order by kiosk you know we've got machines that cook the food you still need people to fix mm -hmm. those machines so you either need to adapt <coughs> not or just you just that. need to find a different job no, not even just fix. So I can give you for an, an example for that. In, um, I'm gonna get this wrong. Um, I want to say it's in Amsterdam. There's, a, it's a fast food thing. It's uh, it's called I want to say an automat or something where it's all bending machines, and so it's like a wall of little doors. You put in the coin and you open the door and you get a little meal. Mm -hmm. So there's people behind that filling it, mm -hmm. and this is literally a bending machine. And so there's a full kitchen, fully staffed and everything. And what you're saying though, the odds of having a full kitchen that's all robots, mm -hmm. it's slim. Oh, very slim, but it was just, just for example. Uh, because you know, uh, they, they have them though. They have mm -hmm. like stir frying robots. They have pizza robot, chip, that 3D printing yeah, pizza. Yeah, 3D printing I mean, pizza. but there's still somebody that's feeding the supplies. Mm -hmm. It's making sure it's doing the, because I mean, we had a freaking, uh, cotton candy robot, right? Mm -hmm. That thing was garbage. It needed, it basically, we should have hired a person to babysit that thing 24 seven. And we had two of them. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, as good as a robot is, it isn't perfect. Mm -hmm. It's gonna make really stupid mistakes that if right. you have people just supervising and keeping an eye on things, they can correct it before it goes right. haywire. And when you're looking at something that's maybe a bit larger scale or doing more minute uh, detail work, like, you are probably still going to want somebody who's forklift certified rather than just yes. a self-driving yes. forklift. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and it comes down to, you know, yes, you might have a factory that's full of robots, but every area is going to have at least one or two people, and then there's going to be teams to repair and so on. 
I would just like to say I've seen a lot of human error on fork trucks where they're taking out pillars and there's yes. even a guy who's gone through a wall. I have seen some horrible things with yes. that too. And if we look at, so like when Tesla first did their, their self-driving car, right? They're like, yeah, this will be road ready whenever. And then they did a test and like, I'm pretty sure it hit someone. Because they couldn't determine, <laughs> yeah, it didn't have that spatial recognition of yeah. like, oh, like it had the sensors, but it well, failed or something like that. It'd be interesting to look into uh, Amazon warehouses because they have fully automated package retrieval and stuff like that. And just watch the South Park episode; you get caught <laughs> in the. <laughs> um, I do know of a factory, and I can't remember uh, a sports car manufacturer that. The way they did it is they had special symbols on the ground that the robot scanned and they knew exactly how to maneuver. But these were like literally just moving part of the assembly so they would deliver parts to the person to assemble it. One of the most interesting interesting things to watch when it comes to robot development is uh, the Boston, whatever they're called. Boston Dynamic. Yes. They make the most interesting robots, and they've gone from, you know, they're standing up robots, they're dog robots, and now they're making yeah. robots specifically for Amazon. It is so interesting to watch those things work. Mm -hmm. Like, basically, like It's all creepy, though. Yeah, it is. And like, like you said, they have pictures and things on the floor, so it knows where to go. Mm -hmm. It scans it, picks it up, puts it where it needs to go. Here's, here's just what I think is, is unrelated. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still, obviously, within the realms yeah. of technology. I don't want to make a prediction, but I'm seeing, like, a lot of, like... Farmer, farming, like, you can go and buy for several tens of thousands of dollars this giant-ass machine with a conveyor belt for chicken eggs, and, you know, it does all that stuff, and even now, I think, milking parlors are somewhat robotic. Yeah, yeah for the most part, yeah, they just there's have still, a thing they put on there, and it automatically milks There's them. still a that person, though, yeah, that's yeah. cleaning, mm -hmm. Yes, and then hooking up the others, yeah. but yeah, it is. I mean, the, the fact that we've made, been able to do that... Mm -hmm. And it's it's very intricate. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a, what? That's a setting that it's also somewhat chaotic because you have mm -hmm. to rely on the the animals to do yeah. part of yeah. well, something. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess another example is uh, also in farming. The combines, for the most part, are now mm -hmm. GPS guided mm -hmm. to yeah. the. I forgot uh, how, what the margin of error is, but it's outrageous mm -hmm. but you still have a person behind the wheel there yep, just to make sure yep. um so it's not like a job got taken away it's just made, it made a lot yeah. easier um okay. and we're getting though into the next bit of this is where human and machine come into play mm -hmm. oh yeah when we get that neural link then people are going to be communicating so with their here's thing. the big issue though currently we make all our energy through eating Mm -hmm. The moment you start adding implants, you're going to need batteries to power said implants. Unless you can use your own body as the battery. I don't, I don't, I don't see think you generate enough exactly. electricity in your, within your own body to power, to power the, a machine. Mm -hmm. they, they created a fabric that generates electricity through motion as well. I, I've seen some of those, and I get, I get that if you had several <laughs> things working, but the point is, though, you're not going to always be wearing clothes. And if you were using that kind of fabric, then what? You can't now take a shower because you'll die. Like, but do you, I, and yes. I'm talking yeah. at an extreme scenario, and I and I'm, I was also even going further where maybe you're just a brain in an, in an android body. Mm -hmm. Like there is no human body left. Yeah, it's yeah. So you're you're substituting a full machine that can generate. Basically, it's a little nuke reactor. You put in sugar and it gives you energy you yeah. know for something that relies on electricity which you need to go through all these other steps to get so is that a good trade i mean i feel like that's super dangerous right now you have to worry about eating right and you don't have to worry about eating every day even we could last a little bit thanks to i mean on eh, even somebody well, who's depends. you can i think i could last like a, a year so uh, it, it i you might have to correct me on this, but the way I was taught is a rule of threes. Days, yeah. the, the, the rule goes, it's like three seconds in adm without atmosphere, three minutes without air, three days without water, three weeks without food, three months without people, no, without shelter, and three years without people. 
<laughs> yeah. So you're trading a amazing machine for something that if you run out of battery, you're fucking dead. Yeah. And battery storage, unless it gets somehow between here and then, unless it revolutionizes, it's not good. Uh, and, and the implications of what technology is going to do to humans just based on even our social media consumption. You know, a lot of people are worried about what is social media doing to the new generations. But I think that's less of a concern because it's just going to be another part of daily life. You know, it's, it, there is going to be a change. We, we are literally right now going through the social media change. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody can get it out there. So, and you get those bubbles that people are talking about. So... <clears throat> I, I think as far as that aspect of it goes with the social media and stuff, I think it's going to kind of balance out. The thing that kind of worries me, because like we were talking about battery space, with the neural link is, so you put the neural link in, and then at night you have to attach a charger to it. So it's like, what if something mal... Like, I mean, this thing is literally sitting right on your brain. And I mean, it's FDA approved, it's all that stuff, but it's like, what if something malfunctions? What if the battery... The leaks? batteries would not be inside you, though. Or it, are they? They are because they so they they cut out an inch of your skull. Uh, they put the piece in there. They cover it back up, and then the battery is in the little circle that's that's the inch thick, and then the wire is just going to your brain. So mm. the the battery is literally just sitting right mm. here, and uh, you're literally putting something on there. So charger. my guess is the battery is still outside of your body mm -hmm. because the FDA would never approve a battery. Just chilling inside you, though. You, you should watch the Neuralink thing. Do they? Yes, it is. Pacemakers? Yes, it is. Do they have a battery inside? Yep. Because yep. the pacemaker, I thought, has so an exterior. Have, no, no, so the pace an is interior, and it only is good for how many? Like five years yeah. or so. So, so they actually what kind of battery do they use? I don't know. Lithium ion. But we also have internal uh, pain pump machines and internal TENS units um, yeah. to cause stimulation to things. So we actually put quite a few batteries in there. So yeah. has there been any instances of those batteries rupturing? And oh, no, not like that, but mm. I mean, people get infected. So it's fairly so safe. So isn't yeah. it with pacemakers that it sends a signal? Doesn't it send a signal if something is malfunctioned on the pacemaker? It can, yeah. Okay. So usually if usually a pacemaker is malfunctioning, you know, but... Well, do, yeah, do any, <laughs> but I mean... But yes, yeah. we have ways of testing it. We actually have, like, wireless transmitters that collect the information and, like, essentially fax it to the people mm -hmm. who read it and tell us what so happens. That's another fail fascinating, safe, so. Yeah, okay, that's another fascinating part of technology is that instead of, like, going to a doctor, if you have a Neuralink or one of those things, they can literally just send the data to them and be like, oh, this is what's going on with your brain chemistry right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should do something about that. But are, are any of those rechargeable batteries, or are they all just one-use um, lifelong? I'm pretty sure they just replace them. Yeah. They just so th this surgically one's, go in and replace yeah. them. Yeah, this yeah. one's a little different in the fact that it's rechargeable, which is interesting. But, mm. like, I mean, people are already worried about, you know, 5G waves getting into yeah. their brain. Think about so having... the, I, I'm still all up for it. But no, I agree. I don't, Dude, I'm gonna get one if I if I'm can. if I'm going out that way, I'm okay with that. Right. You know? But I, I I get the concern thinking mm -hmm. about Samsung not that long ago. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What I'm thinking about yeah, those phones blowing up. So it's like, oh man, what if that was in your soul? I mean, you wouldn't feel it for very long. Well, Hopefully. And, and quite frankly, in their defense, I mean, we've had, what, um, what are they called, breast implants that have exploded on airplanes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I mean, those aren't even batteries. I'm going to, like, Elon Musk is making it, so, I, like, I don't know. I just trust the guy. I like so the guy. Mike, the, the, the problem is you also get your whole tinfoil response of, <laughs> fuck, they're going to know everything. Well, but, I mean, there's no way around it. Everybody know. already knows anything about you at this point if you have any so, kind of social media. Yeah, and, yes. I mean, if you're concerned about them tracking you, yeah. you've already got a driver's license. Mm -hmm. They've already Not got just your that. security, your, your phone. Your phone. You know exactly. Google knows everywhere you are and been for a long time, unless you're in like you know air. No, even in there's been some weird shit. I've, so there. I've talked there. to somebody who was like, yeah. So I have. I'm gonna go back, and I just want to have very minimal online use, and then that way, when like you know years down the road, generations down the road, when they go back and look at history, they'd be like, we can't find a single. <laughs> you know, this dude besides his name and like where he was from but other than that like he was like i want nothing hmm. 
out there, it's, which is difficult to do. It is really hard to do nowadays. But other than separating him from himself from the internet, who's going to look back and look at the dude? Exactly. <laughs> true, true. Well, and, yeah. and so you bring up the, the second point that I was going to say. It's like, so, yes, the government might have more access to your shit, but why the fuck do they give a fuck about you? I mean, I get it if you were somebody important, yeah. But, but I mean, they don't care what I'm when doing. Millions and millions of people, you know. I know. I always find that the people who are the most paranoid yes, are these yes, people who yep. nobody gives yes. a fuck about. I, I've met so many people like that. I'm like, why do you think there would be a sniper in the middle of Wisconsin? Like, calm down. Um, but but that that brings up a good point about the fact that, as far as po- uh, politics go. We have an aging government that is not keeping up with the times. Mm. And, like, even our presidential debate, a 74 and a 78-year-old man are running. It's like, we're living in a new technological age where they can barely comprehend it. And we're still letting these people make the decisions Mm -hmm. for us who are like, no, no, no. And that's because people have just gotten complacent and lazy. And, And technology, and that's kind of the downside of technology, is it allows for people to be complacent and lazy because... You've got something in your hand at all times that has you have access to the world's knowledge. You don't really have to study. Mm-hmm. Like, look at what we... He didn't know who Tucker Carlson was. It took him, I did. I well, just said the name. His, he right. couldn't put the name to the face. But it took him... No, I did from the beginning. Okay. He just didn't know oh, about the boy way, Either way. <laughs> okay, either way, regardless, it took you all of Five, two yeah. seconds mm. to pull that information up, and you don't have to return... Verify it. Yes, it's what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just kind of going back to the sort of the neural link thing, I see it more likely that um, they, for things where modifications might be considered necessary for some form of work or, you know, that sort of thing, I see it more likely that it's going to be more of sort of just an altered reality experience where mm-hmm. they're just, perception-wise, they're looking through it in a different way and they're controlling it in a different yeah. way. Uh, because that's going to be loads safer and much easier to tell people like hey you can do this you got robot arms while you're hooked mm-hmm. up to this machine but mm-hmm. you go home and you can still hug your kids yeah, yeah that's, that's really good <laughs> well, point. well I, I, I was just gonna bring up like when we get into space exploration mm-hmm. we've talked about this before that's probably what it's gonna be it's gonna be people with drones just sitting at their computers mm-hmm. you know oh i'm mining today and they're just sitting there mining instead of actually being in space it makes a lot more mm-hmm. sense to have drones go out there and you yeah. just control them. Just just sell it as a game. Everybody will... It, it's, nobody will okay. stop. <laughs> so there's a game, EVE Online. We've talked about this. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. You're just taking these ships out there, mining... How familiar are you with EVE? I I heard that somebody messed with like the in-game stock market one time. Uh, <laughs> it's many times. So <laughs> think about... Many times. So to simplify it, it's real life in a game. So... It's, it's a game that's got such a sophisticated crafting system that's to the point where it's almost realistic. There is an entire economy for every component. So the big thing is space exploration. Mm-hmm. So in order to build a ship, you need all these components. In order to get one of those components, you need all this material. In order to get all this material, you need all this ore. Okay, so it's, it's like get silicon, make... Yes. So mine an asteroid... It'll give you this ore, take this ore and refine it into its base components, gather enough base components and turn it into microchips, and then turn those microchips into a a, a computer board, could turn that computer board into a part of a gun that goes on a spaceship. (laughs) It's that level of complexity. And there is no AI NPC seller. You're buying straight from people. Mm. So listen, you're definitely selling some people on the game, not me. <laughs> but, but the point is that that's what it could be like. Yeah. So you could be piloting an actual ship in space to do that. But, I mean, eventually we are going to get humans in space because humans are not the kind of creatures that are going to be okay with yeah. just robots. Like, we want to be out there. Hey, quick, quick note. You know people have gone to space, right? (laughs) I mean for like long expeditions and things like that. Like I really do think that at some point there will be a culture of people who have never really been on a planet. There's there's an issue with that though where they found that um, if you send like a a vessel out Mm -hmm. and you have, you know, people cryogenically frozen Mm -hmm. in it, um, 
it's going to get surpassed by a different vessel that was yes. made later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that that's why, I mean, this is way in the future where we're talking about humans exploring space. But it's, it's just such an intriguing concept. And I think the biggest technological advancement we're going to have in, like, the next... 10 years is probably going to be the base on the moon that they're planning right now. Well, the fact they found water. Yes. Oh my, that is a huge deal. Wasn't there like a fissure earlier this year that they were just like, it's kind of, I don't know. But I, I, yeah, I know they have found water on the moon now, which is, which is huge. Yeah, huge. Which means we can actually sustain a base on the moon. Mm-hmm. Means at least one comet. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, wasn't it a, a piece of the Earth that had broken off and then formed itself? Basically, it's so, from impacts and chunks that were floating congealed into a moon. So it's all leftover materials. Now, what exactly there it is, there's many theories. One is like, so there's a space between us and another planet, maybe Mars, yeah. I always forget. There were there should have been a planet, and the belief is that mm. the Earth and that planet it's collided. It's between Mars and the next planet. Is it? Yes. And there, so that's where the big belt is of yeah. all the asteroids. And so there's a lot of theories, but yeah, it the most common thing is it's just debris that from the formation that just congealed. Um, I've heard it estimated that within the that asteroid belt there is like enough material for. Just ever. Mm-hmm. Like, there, there's so much raw material there that it's insane. Yeah, yeah. But it's currently too expensive to go. Yes, yes. <laughs> but, I mean, I think that's what I'm most looking to the future of what technology is going to become. I think that is what I'm most excited about. Whether we become more cyber, cyborg-like or whatever is beside the point. I'm more excited for our space exploration mm-hmm. side of it. In my case, I am looking forward to man and machine blending. Mm-hmm. That's my thing. I really want to be part robot. Well, and I mean, we honestly, <laughs> we're, we're already kind of cyborgs yeah. because we literally use this for everything. But I, I want to take the middleman yes, out yes. and just have that yep. be already yep. in me yep. and just be, like, just be like, think about it and have a little window with a video pop up. Exactly. That's so how, what I really how want. How cool is it going to be if you have this to kind of like control, like, yeah. So when we first get the Neuralink, it's going to connect to your phone, and you can just send stuff to it. Or it's, it's going to be so interesting because it's like, what is that going to do to communication? Because you are going to be able to connect to other people's devices and share ideas. Dude, the first thing that I, part of the whole reason for a computer, you could speak to anybody that, yes. because you'd have access to every language it's written. Yes. Or, or even just the thought. I mean, of, it, like, it might be in that stupid Microsoft voice, <laughs> but you'll still be able to communicate. But, but what if we could even communicate just through pictures? You know, like yeah. what if you could just send the images that are going through your head? Because I don't know about you guys, but a lot of times I'll have like these movies playing through my head, and it's like, okay, how do I describe that? Mm-hmm. Think if you could send that to somebody and let them see. That what sounds like doing. a Vulcan mind meld. <laughs> right? Yeah, it does, honestly. D and D is gonna be awesome. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, that oh my Just god. a bunch of people sitting <laughs> on a table like this, and and then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the thing I'm afraid of is when if you get to the point where you can start sharing like ideas and thoughts. The, I can't always rein it in. <laughs> right. Like, well, yeah, th- th- that is a good question of what is that going to do to human connection? Because you're not going to be able to lie as easily as we can now unless you're turning surprised. it off. I feel like that's it, true. It, it, if there's a system, there's a way to manipulate it. Well, I, I think of, I think of it in terms like this. So when I was with my wife, there was plenty of times that I had thoughts where I was like, oh my God, I'm glad she can't read my mind. Cause like I'd be thinking about a dick or something, and, <laughs> and so it's like it's like I'm glad that she can't do that, but at the same time it would have been very beneficial because then people would be like, wait, what was that about? But that's part of what I was just saying though. If there's a system, there's a way to hack it yeah. and manipulate it. Yeah. So you could just as easily make it so it's whatever you want. Mm-hmm. So you could be thinking horrible things and projecting really puppies and like that's eels, true. you that's know. True. So, I mean, look at what does it say? Like there's. I watched this a long time ago, so I don't know how factual it is, but it was like how to cheat lie detectors. Oh. And, which, I mean, granted, we all know that those yeah. are just weird, but if one guy was like, yeah, I did a lie detector test and the dude passed, but he actually did it, but I found out that he put a thumbtack in a, the in front a of shoe. his shoe and yeah. like stepped and on it. Step on it. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the way that 
spies were taught is your sphincter muscle. I am not making this up. You literally contract your sphincter at certain times and it creates enough of a reaction that they can assume it's a, a thing. Now I'm just clenching my sphincter. <laughs> <laughs> but it is definitely, it's definitely going to change the face of humanity, that's for sure. And, and one thing, so Joe Rogan says this a lot, and I find it very interesting. He's like, when you think about what humans are, it's almost like we are literally the sex organs for technology. Because he's like, all, like, that is all humans do is innovate, create, and we have gotten to this point now where we're actually with technology. So it's almost like we are sex organs for AI. And, <sighs> Not all we do. We no. destroy a lot. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I mean, actually, think about this. So, if we create a race of AI, we're literally their sex organs. Here's, the, I, I get where you're mm-hmm. going with that, but really, we're a lot simpler than that. Mm-hmm. We're a self-propagating machine that literally has one goal in life and has to keep passing on. Right. So we are our entire goal. We are reproduction. Yes. That's what DNA is there for. That's what it all it's all about. It's life literally trying to keep mm-hmm. living. The reason there's different types of beings alive is because life does not put all its eggs in one, one basket. basket. Yep. It literally tries to spray out as wide as possible so that something will keep on keeping. Yes. So, yeah, that's all we're here for is to keep being alive. Now, if we create something else we're just doing what dna told us to try and spread and we're doing evolution you know yep but is the comes to the fact of is ai really alive so we'll have to do an episode on ai but for that we'll have to do a lot of research because i don't know enough about it to i'll just keep talking on my butt i'm good with that talk about artificial insemination or (laughs) (laughs) but no we're not gonna talk about your day (laughs) <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I definitely think that there's a lot more positives to technology than there are negatives. Unlike a lot of people today who want to say that every evil comes from technology, whether it's video games or social media, I think there's a much more benefit of us becoming a global planet because of technology. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I, I see no reason to take that concept of we need to slow down our progression for other mm-hmm. people. I think it's just like the whole, you know, oh, technology is bad is, is one fear because not a whole lot of people understand it. Mm-hmm. You know, two, it's just a really nice, like, look at how many, how many kids are like, yeah, I played Grand Theft Auto 5 and then I went and shot my parents. I've been playing Grand Theft Auto since like the third or fourth grade yep. and not once did I ever have a thought of, I'm going to go kill, I'm gonna kill yeah. my parents, steal their car, go bang a hooker, kill the hooker, get my money back. I've never thought that. Right. Which, granted, it's, it's different people and their different thought processes and whatever, but I think that's just, like, a really big cop-out for, yeah, you, know, kids, for you know, juveniles who do this, and they're like, oh, I don't want a life sentence, and the lawyer's like, say it was the video game. Well, do yeah, it. exactly. And then, so then people hear that, and then they fear it, and they're like, I'm, I'm not letting my kids play this, I'm not going to let them do that. And so I think that's just the biggest thing with it, is you have the fear, just like with anything, and then, you know... Tons of misinformation mm-hmm. with unfounded facts. Fine. And and that's going to be something that's going to be a lot harder to find out is uh, false information because with getting into deep fakes, cutting videos, like there's a lot of stuff mm-hmm. that's, you know, is going to make it harder. But I we're going to find ways to counter that just like with everything. But if you think about it though, isn't it kind of, uh, how do I put it? Isn't it kind of convenient that deep fake technology has become so sophisticated just as AI recognition, yeah. face recognition yeah. has also. So it's almost like good way to bypass their own <laughs> thing is by creating fake faces, you know. So and that comes back to the whole people always get so afraid of technology, but the reality is we usually find a way to fuck with yes. it and make mm-hmm. it our bitch. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. you name it, we've fucked with it enough to like, there's an entire subculture who literally sits around and takes things, and it's like, hmm, this was meant to make coffee. What could I make it do? <laughs> yes, you know? yes. We do this for fun. Yep. So the fact is that we're always going to change things yep. and bypass things and make things do what they weren't supposed to do. Well, and, and I also think technology is important for the lay people because it is literally going to be able to give people a voice. 
Like, even in places like China where they restrict a lot of stuff, you still can connect with other Egypt people. and Twitter. What happened with that? Um, when Egypt revol- revolutionized, revolted, okay. uh, they organized everything through Twitter. Really? Yeah. No, I didn't know that. Uh, they had no voice, and that's how the young people okay, were able yeah, to see, get and, together. And that, and is, that is what I love about technology, is that it can connect us in a way that has never been done before, and like the government is probably afraid of that, which is why they're trying to, you know, sow so much dissent among people because mm-hmm. it's like we could actually come together in a real way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then again, usually when the internet meets, you end up with like fairy conventions. So maybe not a great idea. You say idea. fairy convention? Furry. Oh, I thought you said fairy. No, I no, got no. excited. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> I was like, I want to go to a fairy convention. Where are we going? No, you don't want to go to a fairy convention. <laughs> Anywho, final thoughts. Uh, as long as there's less restriction towards the technology that can really help people, I think that you leave people alone with it, they'll do the right things. And we'll advance it in a way that actually helps the human race rather than hinders it. Yep. I, I think that uh, technology is a necessary, normal part of human life, and it's going to keep happening, so there's, you might as well embrace it as it comes. And if you know of any fairy conventions, invite me, because I'll be there. <sighs> Sorry? It's all good. <laughs> well, just like with anything, there's good and bad. People use technology for amazing things, outstanding things, things that help progress, and there's people that use it to... Um, you know, stop that progression, put us backwards, and I think we just need to um, use technology to our advantage, progress ourselves, not be afraid of it, and understand that even if a robot takes your job, learn how to fix the robot, learn how to control the robot, and you still have a very well-paying job. And we still need janitors. Mm -hmm. Uh, robots. Yeah. Um, honestly, I agree with all that, you know, technology's the way, and just one word, sex robots. Sex robot, sex robots. Two. Yeah, I've always seen it written as one. <laughs> yeah, sex bot. I just want to let you know that there, are, <laughs> that there are machines that you can connect to that... Yes, that that's can, not the same. Uh, that's very close. No, it's not the robot. same. No, no. I'm thinking With like... another person at the other end. I'm thinking like it. Ghost in the Shell type of sex robots. Uh, anyway. <laughs> that's it for today. <laughs> <laughs> and on Sex Robot. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the conversation, come and meet us again, and like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment, we really want to hear about your feedback, and hit that little bell for us, and you can get updates every Friday for when we put out a new video.